What is up everyone, how it's going? My name is Anthony and today I come with a super special video because what I'm gonna teach you, what I'm gonna talk about today in this video is never been talked about. It's never been teached, you cannot find it on the internet, you cannot find it on YouTube. I'm gonna be the first one. And stick with me if you wanna know, stick with this video if you really, really wanna know what, what I'm gonna teach you. So this channel, I was thinking how can I, how can I grab more views? And I could do a lot of things for that. I can go simple tutorials like connect your MetaMask wallet and uh, how to interact with the blockchain and write a simple smart contract. But please, that's, there is nothing to learn in that. It's so easy. Uh, I mean, there is no value in this. And however, I could get more views. I'm going to do something very special. And I'm going to teach you how to engineer a DeFi protocol from scratch yourself. And it's not gonna be a simple DeFi protocol, it's gonna be a real protocol that actually gonna solve a real big problem that we see in the current DeFi landscape. So if you're interested in learning something real valuable, completely for free, and I'm, yeah, I know, I should be a little bit of a retard giving this completely for free, but it is what it is. Um, I need to do something to get some uh, traction. And I think this is bringing this piece of value is going to be so much worth, especially for the people I want to stick and want to learn. So, first of all, programming, if it's web development, backend development, smart contract development, I don't give a shit what kind of development is not about the programming language. It's all about solving real world problems. And if we check the current DeFi landscape, what do we see? We see DEXs and we see lending protocols. And I can see that there is a lot of improvement to be made in the lending protocols. Why? And let me find a way to move this slide like this. What do we see in the current DeFi landscape? We see almost only over collateralized loans. What is a co over collateralized loan? Well, it's basically, if you want to borrow something, you need to provide 150 to 200% as collateral. Let that sink in. That basically means if you go to a bank because you want to buy, I don't know, a new car, 50K, the bank says to you, hey, Jimmy, okay, James, you can lend, you can borrow this 50K, but you need to provide me 100K as collateral. That does not make any sense, but that's what we see in the current DeFi landscape. So why do we see this? Well, because there is no way to assess credit risk. There is no way to determine if the person that wants to borrow something, if, if this guy is, is credit worthy, who's going to, it's an address. Who are you? Nobody knows. And that's the reason. So for, for a credit, for a, for a loan, for a credit, there are two important things. That's a way to assess credit risk. So how risky is this type of borrower? How risky is it? And based on the risk, they provide you with an interest rate. So the higher risk you have as a borrower, are as a borrower, the higher the interest rate you're gonna pay. And if you're a low risk borrower, the less interest you're gonna pay. That makes a lot of sense. But in blockchain, in DeFi, there is no way to assess credit, ri credit risk. So you need to provide collateral. Okay, I don't know what the next slide is, but uh, yeah, so basically you could say, yeah, but Anthony, there are already under collateralized loans. There are, there are already under collateralized lending protocols out there. And you're right, that's true. But what's the problem? The problem with those guys is that they are assessing the credit risk themselves. So they, that company X, that protocol X is going to assess, is going to be, is going to give you an interest rate, an opinionated interest rate. And that's completely against the DeFi principles, right? What is DeFi? It's decentralized finance. So why should one simple single authority, one centralized authority assess my risk and give me an interest rate? 
opinionated interest rate. And that's the only thing we see in DeFi. And let me take a quick sip of my coffee because I need it. Delicious. <coughs> Excuse me. So what do we see? We see over collateralized loans and we see uh, centralized opinionated authorities setting the interest rate themselves, assessing your credit risk. So what, what is the solution? The solution is curve bound. It's a decentralized protocol for under collateralized loans on the blockchain. Yeah, so how? How do we do that? Well, I was thinking for this for almost over a year now, and I tinkered it with. I played a lot around with, with different languages. I implemented it in Solana. I implemented it, this, implemented it in uh, Solidity on Ethereum or any EVM-based uh, shenanigans. And um, I could say, why, why do, people could say, why don't you make it a company yourself? Why don't you, you put it on the market? And um, let me teach you some business lessons. It does not matter how good your idea is. It does not matter how big of a gap you are filling in the market. The only thing that matters is the execution. It's the execution, it's the marketing, it's the team, it's the, the momentum behind it that makes an idea successful or not. And I don't want to hassle. I, don't, I literally don't want to hassle with, with finding investors. I don't want to hassle with... Um, marketing and sales and all that shenanigans. I'm an engineer and I, the only thing I want to do is solve problems and people will pay me by doing that. So that's a thing. So what's the solution? And you need to stick with me here because it's complex, it's complex stuff, right? So if you want to learn how to do simple stuff, you go to another channel. If you want to learn how to become the best, if you want to really learn something, how about these things work, then you should stick and and clear your brain. So what's the problem we're solving? We're solving a way to assess credit risk. An, an, an opinionated way, a decentralized way to assess credit risk, credit risk. So how do we do that? If we make a binary options market that is powered by bonding curves, and I will come to these complex terms very soon. So if we make a binary options market that is powered by bonding curves on top of a lending protocol, so we can enable an, and I repeat, an opinionated credit, an opinionated interest rate and credit risk discovery. Now, what do I mean by that? How does that work? Well, what is a binary option market? A binary option market is basically a market where people can buy long tokens and buy short tokens. It's binary, it's zero or one. And if they buy a long tokens, it means that they, for example, let, let's, let's take the loan exactly, directly for example. So let's say James is borrowing 50K, wants to borrow 50K. And then you open up a binary options market where people can, where people can say, yo, I believe that James is credit worthy. I believe that he's going to pay back his loan. You can buy long tokens directly providing collateral. On the other hand, you have people that say, no, I don't believe, I think James is not credit worthy. I believe that the loan is going to default. You can buy short tokens. And if you take the supply, of the long tokens and you take the supply of the short tokens, the total supply, you can directly see if you take the, if, if you take the, the long to short ratio, and I will, I will explain this a little bit, I will explain this better further on. If you take the, the long to short ratio, you can directly derive the perception of the market. Because the market is always right, right? The market always find, fi finds 
an equilibrium, fair value. So if you take the long to short ratio, you can see what the perception is of the market. Does the market perceive the risk, the, the loan as risky? Or does the market perceive the loan as not risky? And by calculating the short, the long to short ratio, you can derive the interest rate. I know it's complex and I hope I explain myself in a good way. And let me open up what's going on. Let me open up a whiteboard <coughs> real quick. How, do, how does this thing work? Yeah, okay, cool. So let's, 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 let's make a graph. Let's make a graph. So we have an, <laughs> let's make a graph. So what do we have here? Okay, I think it's clear enough. I need to zoom in a little bit. Can I move this? Oh, okay. It's the first time I'm using this thing, by the way. So let's say we have our interest rate right here. We call it IR. And we have our long short ratio here. And we design a declining function. A declining function is something like this, where we have a curve, a declining curve, right? Something like this. I know it's garbage, it's, 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 it's trash drawn, but it doesn't matter. And we take the long to short ratio, we could say that how higher, how higher, this, this is garbage, I need to, wait, give me a second, I'm so sorry. So let's do something like this, right? Oh yeah, this is, look at this, look at this. Okay, cool. So if we take the long to short ratio, how higher that is, the lower the interest rate is gonna be. Because how higher the long to short ratio is, that means that there are more shorts, uh, more longs than shorts, there's more volume in longs, which means that the market perceives the risk, the, the risk of the loan is low. That the loan is going to be paid back. That's what the market perceives. Hence, a lower interest rate. But if the long to short ratio is smaller, which basically means there are more shorts, it means that the market perceives the loan is likely going to default that the borrower is not credit worthy. If we put that on this curve, right, we have a short, a short to long to short ratio, so we have a higher interest rate. And it's basically the way we engineer this curve, this declining curve. There's a lot of mathematical formulas we can, we can um, implement. We can, we can adjust the interest rate, right? So we can cap it, we can, a lot of things we can do, but that's the main principle. We create a binary option market po powered by bonding curves. Why are the bonding curves important? Because you need to find a way to price the tokens. You need to have liquidity for the tokens, right? Because it's, it's, a f it's completely uh, decentralized and there is no market maker. It's basically completely automatic and that's why bonding curves are for. Those bonding curves will also incentivize the people willing to take risk very early because you're going to have much more tokens for the same money. <coughs> Man, all this talk, drink some coffee. Okay, cool. So we have this binary option market. People can go long, people can go short, but people can also, it's a new way of, of, of spreading risk, right? So be, because even, even the borrower, let's say I borrow, let's say I'm gonna borrow 100K, damn, 100K. I don't need to provide collateral, but I can. I can even short my own fucking loan. 
I can even long and short. So why is that important? Because if I want to lend, if I want to borrow 100K and I put 20K as a collateral myself, I can instantly impact the market. And what I mean by that is, uh, me as a borrower, what do I want? I want my money, but I also want, I also want to pay a low interest rate. That's, that's normal. So I can put in, put in a little bit of collateral to make the interest rate go down, right? I don't need to, but I can. It's a direct or indirect signal to the market that I'm credit worthy because if I'm putting 20K in my, uh, as a collateral, it's, it's a good sign and it, it directly impacts the long to short ratio so I can engin engineer my interest rate myself a little bit. And then people can come in and they can balance themselves out. They, you, you could say I'm going long, but I'm also going a little bit short and you can balance all these things out. And what markets always do, markets always find a way to abuse. That's very important. It's each and every single protocol. Markets always find a way to come to arbitrage, to come to fair value, to come to an equilibrium. And that's why Uniswap is working, right? Because even though it's not the same type of market making, eventually the market will abuse, quote, quote, abuse, and will balance itself out across those two protocols, right? Across those DEXs and, and the regular ex exchanges. And I hope, and should be the same thing with this. All right. Cool. Let's go back to the presentation. Slideshow. Boom. I don't have any slides left because I'm gonna talk. Okay, cool. So the payouts, it's very important. So what are the payouts? I'm gonna go back to this board because what are the payouts? Let me find uh, something to erase this stuff. More tools. Sticky note. You know what? Fuck this shit. Like this. Okay, cool. So what are the payouts? So who is, who is providing collateral? Who is, who is covering who? Well, let's take an example. For example, Jimmy, let's take James. James is gonna lend 200K, borrow. <coughs> okay, cool. So then we have the longs. And the longs, what is, what is the prerequisite of the longs? The longs needs to, need to cover the loan. They need to cover the principal. The initial amount, so it's 200K. Okay. They need to cover the interest rate, which is 20, let's say it's 10%, so let's say 10, 10%. Yeah, but how can you know it's 10%? I'm just taking this as an example, right? 10%, so it's basically 20K. So they need to have, they need to cover 200K, 20K. And they need to cover the shorts. Let's say the shorts are 50K in short, 50K in short, which basically mean that the longs enable to fund this loan, enable to fund this 200K, enable to successfully fund, crowdfund this, this loan. They need to provide 200K they need to provide the interest rate and they need to provide this 50K in shorts. God damn it. Whatever. Does that make sense? Oh man, I'm, something's wrong. Something's wrong. God damn it. All right. What does this mean? Let's say. Let's say Jimmy pays back. Jimmy pays his loan back. He's a good guy. Jimmy's good. He's a good boy. Well, that means that the shorts lose. The shorts lost their money. Somebody's going to lose money. Unless you could spread in some kind of a way. 
That means that the lungs, what do they get? Let's say on success. I don't even know how to success. What do they get? Well, they get 10%. This is 20K. And of course, I mean, this 20K is coming from, nah, they get the 20, I'm not gonna go into that, to that it's, it's too complicated. So they get the 20K interest rate. Who's paying this 20K? Well, James. James, James is paying this 20K, it's the interest. So they get the interest and they get the shorts. So this is liquidated. Shorts are getting liquidated, so they get this 50K. So in total, there is 70K to be distributed to the lungs. On top of this 200K, of course, right? Just I'm... Um, this is extra, right? This is the profit. I'm, I'm talking about the profit, right? This is the payout profit. So they get the 20K, they get the interest rate, and they get the liquidated shorts. So it's 70K profit. Who is going to get this 70K profit? It's not, gonna be, it's not going to be distributed equally. It's going to be distributed based on the amount of tokens they bought in the bonding curve. So the people that were basically first taking the risk first, because it's easy. If, if, if this loan, if, if there's a lot of people long, and you come in and you say, oh, what, there are 100 people long, let's, let's, let's go long. You're basically a pussy because you, you just follow the market. There is not really a risk. There's always a risk, but you know what I mean. It's the guy that says, whoa, there's a new loan. I don't know this guy, I do my research. There's nobody in the market yet. I'm gonna go first. You get a bigger pie because the bonding curve is exponential. So bonding curve basically goes something like this. It's something that, exponentially is this the price and this never gonna get a reward for this this is the price and this is the supply so how higher the supply is gonna be the higher the price is gonna be so people coming here are gonna pay a higher price which basically means they need for the same money so if Jonathan is buying here for 10K and Mark is buying here for 10K, Mark is gonna get a bigger piece of the pie. So what does that mean? That for the 70K, Mark is gonna get more of the pie. He's gonna get more of the pie. He's gonna get more money. That's how this, this is working from a high level perspective. There are of course a lot of Problems that could arise, like what kind of bonding curve do you use? Is it a sigmoid? Is it exponential? What kind of exponent are you using? And then implementing a bonding curve in, in, in a smart contract is an other type of problems because you have floating points, integer overflows, not every function, not every bonding curve function, not, not every mathematical function can be just copied into, uh, into Ethereum especially not the EVM, because you're limited. You're limited by the virtual machine. So, what do the shorts get if James is not paying his loan back? How many minutes? 23 minutes. You see, this is a very boring talk. It's a very boring topic, but you're gonna learn so much. This is never been teached nowhere, never. Trust me. <coughs> Man, just I'm probably dying, but it's okay. I, I would survive for a, a couple more years. Low, so, okay, cool. So we know what, what, what the loans are gonna get when the loan is successfully paid back. So what happens with a default? So on a default, let's say on a default, default is probably, is it? It doesn't matter. Default. On a default, thanks to the lungs providing basically almost all of the collateral, This are, the 200K is gone, right? Because 
the 200k is gone because the loan is not being paid back or maybe it's just a little payback i don't know how those mechanics are going to work but we know that the initial amount is gone because the loan is defaulted so it basically means jimmy borrows 200k but jimmy did not pay back the 200k so the 200k is gone he's gone somewhere in a ferrari i don't know where it is or even a board ape or something he did not pay it back so what do we have left we have left the interest rate and we have left yeah, but Anthony, the interest rate, uh, if the loan is, def yeah, I know, if the loan defaults, the, James, James did not pay back the interest rate, but it doesn't matter because we expect that the longs also cover the interest rate. So the loan is only, the loan is only being paid back, uh, the loan is only being completely funded, successfully funded, when the longs have covered the initial amount, the interest rate, and the amount sitting in the shorts so this is gone we have this 200k and we have exactly the 50k because we want the longs to cover that so we have 70k right exactly the same we have 70 fucking k's at default And that's for the shorts. So we liquidated the longs. Let's say liquidated long. It's not really liquidated. Yeah, it's it actually it is liquidated. But we still have money to cover the shorts because they are right. And exactly the same uh, same principle. We have the bonding curve. Bonding curve. Damn. We have the bonding curve also for the short tokens. And the people that come in early versus the people that come in late, the people that come in early will have a bigger piece of the 70K. And that's how this whole protocol works. So how do you start this? That's a good question. That is not for this video. This is basically an introduction. This is what you can expect to learn. How do we build these <clears throat> binary options markets? How do we build these smart uh, these bonding curves into a smart contract? How to engineer a bonding curve? It's important because it's we can take a simple function, a simple exponential function, but we need to make it's 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 complicated. And I will I will teach everything about bonding curves. Yeah, but Anthony, how do you know about all of this? Yeah, it's a good question. If you follow this channel, if you subscribe, then you will know why I know all of these things. So I'm going to teach you how to engineer this binary options market, how to make these bonding curves. Uh, maybe we're going to, maybe the, the, the long tokens, the, the bonding curve for the long tokens is going, to be differ, is going to be different than the short tokens. And even if you want to buy from the, from the curve or you want to sell from the curve, maybe, maybe that's a different curve, a different function. It sounds all complicated, but it's important because like I said, crypto is, a, is a, especially DeFi, it's a dangerous space. If you are not protecting your protocol it's very simple and that's not what they teach you on on youtube they teach uh, how to put 50k into a contract or something it's simple but if you are not protecting your protocol from malicious people from smart people because there are a lot of smart people in this space if you do not protect your protocol from those smart people you're going to get wrecked and we see this over and over again like protocols are getting liquidated or, or getting drained because they made a mistake so it's very important to disable or to how do you say to disable how to to deny pump and dump schemes how do we do that how, how do we that's everything i'm going to learn so we're going to learn the bonding curves we're going to learn the, the to make the lending protocol we're going to make we're going to learn how to derive the interest rate how it's all going to work um, and all that good good stuff so if this is something that interests you if this protocol is something you think like oh this is actually this is bangers this is this is good shit then please follow me subscribe leave something in the comment maybe i made a mistake it could be i, I also make mistakes no worries i'm not i'm not uh i'm not superman but um please let, leave something in the comments subscribe like and we're gonna start this the next video we're gonna dive right into it we're going to do, um, it's not always going to be coding, but it's, we're going to engineer this whole protocol. So we need to do some math. We're going to Desmos. It's, it's the, 
the, uh, the <clears throat> mathematical graphical interface. So we're going to design our curves. We're going to see it visually and um, we're going to start small and we're going to increment and we're going to make this protocol. Isn't this amazing? This is, this is unique. This is a premiere. Be a part of it. See you in the next video.